for Tameria! For Lyria and Rivia! Hey, done! It was a dark, stormy night. Weary travelers crouched in the dimly lit corners of a shabby inn, and a few of them still awake spoke only in whispers. For it was well past midnight, and the flames in the fireplace were slowly burning off. All of a sudden, the door slammed open, and in came marching an elder man clad in heavy metal plates. Two swords on his back, and all eyes upon him. And the moment the innkeeper was slowly approaching the shelf in which he kept his crossbow, the stranger spoke. How about a few rounds of cards? Gwent, specifically. I was one of those lads cringing in the corners. And let me tell you guys, what a night it has been. We laughed and we cried. We played until the morning and so today, I'm not gonna show you one. I'm not gonna show you three. But I am gonna show you two of the supposedly highest win rate decks this season. Or at least my take on them. In case you're wondering, we're going Shield Wall and Rage of the Sea today. And when it comes to win rates, yes, I'm only working with unofficial data here. The official ones will be released only after the season. So if it will be different, please don't go like, Oh my god, he lied to us. He betrayed our trust. Anyways, according to the information I have at my disposal, Shield Wall and Rage of the Sea are both strong meta decks with high consistency, with supposedly highest win rates overall, Nature's Gift being the third one in case you were wondering. So this video is gonna be a little different, I apologize to anyone who was hoping for another off meta deck, but I made a promise that I will make something like this, and that's a promise that's not easily broken. So stay tuned, shield wall coming right up. Funny, isn't it? Earlier this season I was kinda hating on shield wall a little, but here I am, doing a shield wall deck in my video. What can a simple man do against such reckless hate? The thing with meta decks is that they are not easily modified, and every little change here and there can make a big difference. You just need to find the one variant that suits your playstyle the most and then play it over and over again, just like the top of the pro rank does. No other way to achieve true mastery and a recognition amongst other Gwent players. I think the most visible change in comparison to most of the meta shield walls out there is the addition of Ildiko, Truly, the zeal it gives when inspired can often turn the game around. I'm not saying like I made some groundbreaking discovery here, I mean of course not. I am just presenting here to you the shield wall deck with the structure that proved to be the most effective one for me. Obviously the thing with this deck is that you prepare the ground in the decisive round with Donimir, your defender, and with Wissogota of Corvo and build up your path that eventually leads to Prince Anseis and Viraxas and Oliphant, I mean War Elephant. Seltkirk can in some cases be used earlier in the game because you usually do not need two duelists on the same round, although it's a welcome bonus sometimes. And also there is Anna Stranger, one of those cards that can be used in the first round to help you a little with the round control. As you can see, it is a devotion deck, so there is no Bomb Heaver, no Irden and such like cards, and the reactive range of this deck rests solely on the shoulders of your duelists and one Boiling Oil. I mean. Trident Infantry can also do some damage, but it's random and not to be relied upon. Anyways, I'm sure many or all of you had the pleasure of facing or playing this deck or a similar one already, so I think it would be better if in this case we just jump into the game, but if you have anything at all to ask or to remark, 
please let me know in the comments anytime. I think there is a pretty good chance we are gonna face another shield. No. We are going Keep against Precision man. Strikes Coyotelo. So, uh, elves and dwarves are gonna face us in this battle of life and death. But what do we have here? Hmm, I don't feel like I need Temple Guard. Two Kerak Marines is a little too much. And he's got the blue coins, so he's gonna start this match with a Danka. Danka, you say? The only good dwarf is a dead dwarf. Well, alright. Tamaria has yet to speak its last. Left, right, left, right. And just like that, we are one point ahead. Fove, is, is she gonna is he gonna play like a uh, Isengrim's Council or uh, Shaping Nature? No, Circle of Life. All right. Is he gonna boost like Sheldon's Skags, Maybe. And now the Karak Frigate is uh, out of his Nature's Rebuke reach. Now it isn't. Yeah. But he did have to spend one charge, and when you have a Shiru in your deck, obviously every charge counts. Are you willing to spend another one, my friend? I'm gonna have a sip of my tea here, and you, you better be prepared for what comes next, because I might be going all in here. He seems bamboozled. And honestly, I didn't play anything like super surprising. Adrenaline Rush, so no devotion with his deck, that's interesting. And Adrenaline Rush. Alright, I'm gonna play Kerak Marine here. Three points ahead on equal terms with cards, but he did already play one charge of Precision Strike. He may have Korati in hand. I don't think he's going here then, but Korati really might be the case. And a lot of nature cards. Yeah, I'm kinda glad. Those are out of the way. I'm gonna play one Kerak City Guard now. A I could draw a pecker on your forehead if you like. Five points ahead and counting. And he's playing Nature's Rebuke again. So, should I continue here? I think so, definitely. I gold, or I'll take your balls instead. Commit more, commit more to the first round. Because in that case you might be in for an unpleasant surprise later on.
So that's the last of his nature's rebukes. Yeah. I wish I had a squirrel now. You know what? Alright, let's pass. He still has Shiru, of course, but... That might be just a scream in the dark in this game. Just like this drawers. Alright. So I'm missing Oliphant, Ara Stranger and Prince Ansi. And it's pretty much it. He's passing right away and I'm going to sacrifice my Temple Guard. Alright, nine, ki nine cards each going into the decisive third round of this match. Just give me an Oliphant and Prince Ansays and it would be very very good. Nice! Not nice, not nice. Alright. Anna Stranger and the boiling oil, so no Oliphant for me this match. Well, that's kinda an obstacle on our way to victory. So let's just start as ever. Let's start with Donimir. But then again, he may have Korati. And here it comes. Alright, now it's time for Visogota and I'm gonna spend one charge on him. Yeah, I know, Precision Strike is pretty good against shield using cards. But he's only playing a minor. A card that's pretty much similar in most respects to Radovid's Royal Guards, but I'm not gonna play those in this match, I think. Should I go Boiling Oil Minor now? That's just ridiculous. I'm gonna go with Trident and Infantry here. And I'm gonna destroy his Minor with Trident. Infantry. What? Geralt of Rivia. Don't get me wrong, I love him, but in this kind of deck, that's interesting. Novik Radiant Justice. Can dwarves fight? All right. Let's go, Ildiko now. Old man. His mere touch is revolting. I don't think he can reach a seven points of uh, of Shiru now, but he does have a boosted Sheldon. Is he playing? All right. Well, now he did piss me off a little. Now it looks a little better, he's saying Grimm's Council of course. No he's playing a pretty much a made up precision strike deck, but the addition of Get Out of Rivia is pretty interesting to me. And now, all 
court shall pledge their allegiance. Oh, I'm not giving him a shield, of course. I'm just boosting him up a little. Should I destroy something? No, let's wait. And here comes Shiru, and he's absolutely useless. What do you want? Eleven points ahead. We are getting there. Tempering. That's not going to be enough. But now you have at least a seven point of a unit. God, a duel to a duel, I challenge thee. And we got this just like that. Already, he still had what ca one card in his hand, but he forfeited the game, as they all do when facing a deck like this. So trust me, if you want to do some. Speed climbing in the current patch, Shield Wall might be one of those ways to go. For now, I think I'm gonna show you the second deck. Uh, it's a Skellige one, Rage of the Sea, like I already said. So stay tuned, Rage of the Sea coming right up. When I first started meeting these new Rage of the Sea decks, I did not pay much attention to them. As on the paper, they really do not seem to be that strong to me. It cannot yield a high number of points, while it also is not one of the most reactive decks out there. It cannot be called mid-range as well, but its strength lies actually in its weaknesses. In the current meta, not offering your opponent a high value target for his removals is actually a plus. So I was kind of surprised when I tried this deck out and learned that it actually works so well, it can in fact be called an anti-meta. An anti-meta that is so good that, unofficially of course, it yields the highest win rate in pro rank overall. The thing with this deck is, there are no super strict rules to follow. You adapt your game as you proceed with the match while having a lot of versatile answers to whatever your opponents put on board. Of course, it's usually worth saving your best for last, but there are many ways to adjust your order of cards played. It's another devotion deck, so no oniromancy with this one. You have blood, sorry, you have blood eagle for those kind of situations you would like to adjust your draw a little. A lot of these decks use uh, Svolblad Totem, I dropped it and added uh, Morkvark in its place. I honestly think Morkvark can be more versatile in most situations and in my opinion he kinda fits into this deck just nice, even though there is no Dagur and no way to double the profit he makes. Yalmar and Krait used to be played a lot with Yuta in the last patches, but with the new and Krait Greatsword rework, he damages a card for 10 points and so can destroy a lot of engines before they start to accumulate. When it comes to dealing with defenders, of course, Yalmar and Krait also can be the best approach, but unless is your opponent boosting his defender for non-stop, every round, he can actually perish under the amount of damage you can apply almost every single turn. So Yalmar, Harald and Hemdal, the three H's, can be considered your finishers, even though you shouldn't hesitate to play either of them in case they can destroy some card that can prove to be very valuable for your opponent. With this deck, you can experiment a lot, so don't hesitate to do just that. Bear in mind though that it takes tens or even hundreds of games before one becomes proficient with the deck. So especially with a deck like this, it may take some time, but trust me here, it's worth it. If played properly, it can really make the most out of a lot of usual board situations this season. 
if you have another tested variant of this kind of deck at your disposal, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than willing to share my humble knowledge with you and the other way around of course. For now, let me show you that you have to respect the sea. We're going rage, rage, rage of the sea against shield wall. Well, what a surprise. Oh, this is gonna be interesting, my friends. I wonder what version of meta shield wall is he gonna play? Maybe Bloody Baron in place of like Ildiko. So that would be nice. I'm not gonna offer him any suitable target for that. Hmm. Well. Well, now it can work somehow. I guess. His only removals are gonna lie in the duelists and try them infantries, maybe. So let's go with Longship. He may have a boiling oil. So let's boost it. He doesn't have any poisons though, so obviously in this situation, tactical advantage. He's using a Korati heat wave. So he's playing shield wall with Korati, no devotion then. Very corpses? Nay, feed our foes to the crabs while they still live. Huh. He plays Korati. That's a 10 provision cost card. Am I right? Yes. So what did he drop? Maybe like Ildiko or Prince Anseis or even Veraxas or maybe Best Oliphant. And uh, he's gonna destroy it, I think. Isn't he? In this case, he used Korati. I think we might be in for a short round. He's going Karosh, Merciless, so it's a very different kind of shield wall here. Well, of course I'm not gonna destroy him. And his connection is lost, uh, just like that. But I sincerely hope he's gonna reconnect. We've still got a battle onto ourselves. Don't tell me he just uh, <laughs> left the game after I destroyed his Roche. Well, if that's the case, I promise I'm gonna play another one, because this is just ridiculous. Let's have some tea. Alright, I think he left. So yeah, let's play another one. Actually, today so many players uh, disconnecting. I don't know if it's if it's a thing about the decks I'm playing today, but aren't there some like issues with the with servers? I don't know. I hope not, because this time it's a Skellige Mirror, Death is only the beginning. and he's going the Mardroem deck, Battle Trance. So can I expect maybe like Draco Turtle? Maybe one of my former decks inspired him, maybe not. So uh, what do we have here? Stunning Blow would certainly be nice against a Draco Turtle. I don't feel like I need Villager. Yeah. I have Vabjorn so I can like call a Blood Eagle anytime. 
and Chrome Asyndros, yeah, that is a kind of usual approach to a battle trans deck. Is he gonna play an operator as well? I am gonna play a long ship. And it might be the case he destroys it right away. Well, obviously, my deck did not inspire him so far. <laughs> He's playing a lot of cards very differently. So, I might be in... Oh, he's playing a Defender. Covenant of Steel in the first round. I could do this all day. Well, well, well. Kill the sun. Steal the lashes. I don't have a warrior in my graveyard, so... Yeah. Interesting. I'm gonna continue a little, but yeah, it's gonna be a short first round, I think. I'm gonna go with the Blood Eagle here, I think. I'll got you like fishes! With maybe Dramon Berserker just to scare him a little. What this? He's playing a very high combos in the first round. So now I'm pretty sure he's like saving saving uh, the scenario, getting it as his finisher. Should I continue here? I don't think so. Although Morkvark would be nice against Draco Turtle. Maybe he's gonna play double Draco Turtle with Sigurd Rifas right there. I'm gonna save Morkvark, definitely. And I'm gonna play one Invader. Should I, though? I'm gonna play a Greatsword. I will flop off three heads with one blow. I think he's gonna continue. Yes, with Oneiromancy. And he's playing Crow Mother. So definitely a getting eight. I see some Druids in his deck. Well, 14 points ahead and counting three per turn. That's not like perfect. So I think I'm gonna pass here, thank you. So what do we have here? I think this is kind of nice. I'm missing Harald, obviously, and Hemdal, so two out of the three H's. It's not very nice. But I think I can, man I can make this work. Alright. Is he gonna pass right away? I don't think so. He's gonna bleed me with his getting eight. Isn't he? Well, and now he's gonna forfeit them, right?
He's going for it. I feel it in my bones. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the getting eighth, the one and only. Trust equally in heart and mind. So I think we are going to see a very short third round, in case of course I manage to win the second one. I can help you if you wish. And he's playing Delirium. Alrighty. A poison beaks like a poison arrow. Or is he just gonna pass right away? Double Draco Turtle. Here she foes. comes. Yeah, I knew that. Bow before modern Freya. Yeah. They have our loins. What a nice Morkvark target. Should I use him right away? Oh. Yeah, let's do that. No, let's wait for his... Maybe he's gonna use another Mardro M on it. Let's wait. But maybe he's gonna pass now. No. So he's going Axel. So my deck or some similar deck may have inspired him after all. Because double Draco Turtle, that's what I was doing there. Could have been better, but it's all right, I guess. So is he gonna gonna pass now? Here comes the second one. Don't tell. Really? I really thought you were gonna use it on Draco Turtle. Well, in this case. Well, still, Draco Turtle is gonna be my target. He's gonna use my Herkia now, destroy. What the hell? Why? Why did he use his stunning blow on his Svalblot priest? What is this sorcery?
Now I'm really perplexed. Now I am bamboozled. Honestly. We'll turn the sea red. Red! <laughs> well, he did forfeit. But I think even he, if he did use his uh, stunning blow on like my unit, uh, he wouldn't have won this game. But I definitely would not get into a card advantage going into the last round, which was this case. Anyway, I don't know. I might be on some uh, good run here with uh, Rage of the Sea. So I think I'm gonna play one more, you know, one of those games uh, the opponent passed right away. And I apologize for that. So let's just play one more. And this time... We're up against Inspired Zeal Northern yeah, Realms. Save me some time. Hello, Siri. Hello there. So, uh... I don't need two stunning blows with Vabior in my hand, obviously. <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to discard stunning blow and I misclicked. Uh, Alright. Why did I misclick? Vabjorn can also call like a raiding fleet or something. Well, alright. I think we could have expected as much. With Inspired Zeal, maybe he's going like Vernon Roche with Blue Stripes Commandos. That might be the case. Also, I can expect, I suppose, some Duelist. Also maybe Bloody Baron, that would be nice, because I won't offer him anything to use it on properly. Oh, Neuromancer, he's playing Timurian Drummer. Or Vernon Roche, right away. With the charge being spent, just about yeah. now. That's what nice mess you've got here. Oh, I'm gonna stay in the game for a little while longer because I'm pretty sure he's gonna use like a blue stripe scout or something really soon. He's also playing Pavetta, Princess Pavetta obviously, the mother of this girl and uh, Empress of Time and Space or something like that. My great granddaughter will do great. Yeah, here comes the blue stripes. He's gonna play another one, I'm sure. Must die. So I'm gonna continue a little. Back where you belong, with your wenches and your wings. Because I know he's gonna play one more, I'm sure. And he is. So now he has. Six blue, sorry, five blue stripe scout, that means 20 points. Right now 21, but it's gonna be 20 points later on in the game. Yeah, I think I may have to pass here. Yeah, there he's, he's 39 points ahead. But he did commit Vernon, Queen Adelia. Yeah, but he built up a combo that may be used even one or two times. Two times more in the game. So... This might be a hard one. And now he's playing Princess Pavetta, obviously.
But let's not forget he already spent two of his three charges. So he's passing right away. That's good to know. Very good. I think I'm gonna play a Blood Eagle just to thin my deck a little. We'll follow you always. Back to the fair. And I sincerely hope. I'm gonna get at least one of the three eggs because I have neither Hjalmar nor Harald nor Hemdal. Well, but I have Hemdal now. So, either Harald or Hjalmar. Not both of those. I didn't have a perfect draw with this kind of deck in like ages. <laughs> but I suppose it doesn't matter as much as long as we keep on winning. Very corpses? Nay, feed our foes to the crabs while they still live. Kerak Frigate. Yeah, well. I will flop off three heads with one blow. I think I'm gonna go Harald next turn. Is he going another boiling oil or amphibious assault? Yeah. What black railer? Now that is interesting. I'll fight to my last breath. And she is inspired already. I cannot. Let it stay this way. Yeah, I'm going hard out. Turns, all of you. We'll greet them with a fire and iron. This is what I do not like to see. We are 22 points ahead. At least that is something. Another pact! Are you kidding me? And a match charge is really going all in on his black railer. Yeah, sea. and now my. Oh, 
My Harald is gone. But we are 29 points ahead. Hmm. I know he's got still 20 points. And now he's gonna portal the blue stripes commandos in. No, it's just Kirvenai Knights. Huh. Here comes the commandos and the suitable him dealt target. Finally. Even though it could be better, he's closing in on us. I don't like this. This game is gonna be much more dramatic than I would have hoped so. So I think this is gonna be very very close. Calm yourselves. 17 points ahead. So can he yield 18 points in one turn? I don't think so. I don't think so. Elf must die! We have one by the margin of 9 points. And just like that, in about, I don't know, half an hour, we have won 3 games with Rage of the Seas Kelligan. The season of Hammer Dryad ends in about 8 or 9 days, so the time is nigh for some last week climbing, and if you wanna do just that, these decks we've played today might be the thing you were looking for, unless you found that thing already. In that case, I want to make a few quick remarks about the season we are currently playing. I talked about it already a little in my last videos, it doesn't favor many of meta decks, so this last month I did not make that many of those as I perhaps did earlier. I sincerely hope this situation is gonna change in the beginning of October, when the new season starts and the new patch will be applied. I'm really looking forward to it, although I am a little scared as well. Let's hope for the best here anyways. Thank you all very much for watching, please let me know in the comments what do you think about the current meta and what is your opinion on some of the most meta decks in the current Gwent. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already, I am really grateful to each and every one of you. Once again, this was Orpheus and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye bye!